Hi everyone, my name is Pat. Welcome back to my channel. A few years back, I made a tutorial on trigonometry and polar coordinates. And today's the day where I will teach you how to apply that knowledge to make something that you see on the screen right now. Let's get started. First of all, we need to be able to draw one of the circle that moves along the circular part path, right? To do that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create an object and this object is going to be called cell, the class itself. So you have to create a file called cell.js or whatever name that you want to name yours. Add file. Um, so first, um, to create an object, you need to write a class. So my class, I'm going to name it cell and it's going to have a constructor function. This constructor function um, will have, so because we want to draw a circle that moves around a circular path, it will have two variables as a starter. One is called this.r for the radius itself, and I'm going to set it at 100 to begin with. And then another is this.angle, and I will set the angle of this circle at 0. Two of the functions that I will have in my class one is called update and then the other I'm gonna have it call um, display right so what each one does the update is gonna update the location of the circle and this is where the lessons from the previous video will come into play right we're gonna convert from are an angle to x and y coordinates. So the two equations that we learned, one is that dot x equals to, or x equals to r times cosine of angle, right? Because we are writing a class of an object, you need not to, you need to not forget to write this dot. And then same for y, so y will equals to r times sine of angle. Okay, so this is gonna be what I have in the update function. In the display function is where I will write commands or functions to draw the circle. So I'm gonna draw an ellipse and this ellipse is gonna have um, x and y coordinates at this dot x and this dot y and then I'm gonna give it a size of 10 in diameters. Okay, I'm also gonna draw a line that goes from 0, comma, 0 to this dot x and this dot y so we can see how the circle moves along the circular motion. Okay, so once we create a class called cell, what you need to do is also go to index.html file. This is where you will link your JavaScript file to the entirety of this program, right? So where you see this line here, just copy and paste and change the name from sketch.js to cell.js and because this is the name of the JavaScript file that we had created. Okay. So now that we have linked, let's go to sketch.js and what we want to do next is to create an object, right? An object from our class cell. So I'm gonna create an object called C and um, C is gonna be a new object of the class cell. And essentially what I'm doing right now is that I'm just gonna create a new cell and just try out the functions just to make sure that everything I wrote is doesn't have any errors basically. So C update and then C dot display. Then we will run our program and what we see, what do we see? We see something up here. It is a line that we drew, right? with the length of r, which is 100, and then we saw a circle of radius of diameter 10 up top here. It doesn't move, it doesn't do anything, but it does exactly what we told it to do, which is good. No errors right now. 
what we need to do is go back to cell, right? Cell.js, and another thing that we want to do is also we want to update the angle, right? We want to increment the angle, and we will do that by maybe we increment it up by 0 0.01. The reason that I do it at a very small increment is because the angle mode that the program is in is radiance, right? And one loop of radiance is um, 6.28 or 2 pi. So we don't want to increment it too fast. If not, the circle will move way, way, way too fast. Okay, so once we increment it up by this, let's just click play just to make sure that everything is correct. And, oh, it is not correct because what? Angle is not defined. But actually, angle is defined, but I just forgot to put this dot here, right? In a class, do not forget this dot. There you go. So now the circle moves. What I want to do is I want to create a grid, a grid with a specific number of columns and rows, right? Because we want to populate each of the grid with one of these cell objects. So what we need is a new variable called grid, and this variable is an array, right? And then what we need to do is we need to create a 2D array called grid. And to do that, we will use a for loop um, to create that 2D array. So for let i equals to 0, i less than columns. I know I, haven't, I have not um, cre created that variable yet. This is just a placeholder. I plus plus, and then same thing for j, let j equals to zero, j less than rows, then j plus plus. Okay, so then we need, um, okay, so in JavaScript, we cannot just do, we cannot just tell the computer that, hey, um, grid is a 2D array, and you can just do a double square brackets like this we first have to make have to tell the computer that it is a 1d array and then after that within the first loop here we put in in each of the location of the columns we put in an empty array here and then this is how we create a 2d array in javascript and then once we have an array within an array we can populate it with our cell objects. Okay, so this section here is us creating a 2D array called grid and each of the location has a new celled object, right? So now we can delete um, the C variable here. Then what? Then we want to We want to also use a 2D array to call a function, call the method, right, of grid ij update, and then same thing, grid ij display. Let's see what happens. Call system, oh, right, so, we will also have to define calls and rows, and I will make it at as a grid of two by two. Okay, so what you see up here, it hasn't changed, right? You do only see one circle, but the reason that you see one circle is because um, the initialized location of each cell is at the same location. So that's what we need to change. We need to go back to cell.js, and now I'm going to give it two parameters, um, which is x0 and y0. So x0 and y0 will be the location of the center of the circular motion. This dot x0 will be set at whatever value we give for x0 and this dot y0 will be set 
as whatever value we give for y zero. Okay, so once we have this, we also need to change the locations, the coordinates in here. So instead of zero, zero, this will be this dot x zero, this dot y zero, and then it will be this dot x zero plus this dot x and this dot y zero plus this dot y. And then we need to change the x and y coordinates of the ellipse as well. Okay. And once we do this, we now have to give the arguments for the instructor function within the cell, right? So what is it going to be? If we were to just do, let's say, like i times 100, 100 is like a spacing for each of the cell, right? j is times 100. Kind of works. Now we see four circles, but they're not exactly at the locations and off the size that we want. So what do we do? Right now we have a we have specified the number of rows, calls, and the, the, the number of rows, right? And we also have the width size and the height size. So we want to also create two more variables to indicate the size of each of these cells. I'm going to create two variables called row size and call size. And I'm going to create these variables within the setup function. And the reason that I'm doing that is because we need to use the width and the height size that is within the create canvas function. And if we were to create the new variables, row size and call size, as global variables, they will say that, oh, I cannot find what the width and the height is, right? So let's do row size to be equals to height divided by rows, and then call size will be width divided by calls. Okay, so once we have this, what are we going to use it for? we're going to use it here, right, as the spacing of each of the cells. It's spaced out correctly, but right now what is not correct is the center of the circle is at the top left corner, which is not where we want. So first, let's fix that location. So what we need is it has to be shifted what? It has to be shifted half of the column size and half of the row size. So call size divided by 2 and plus here, row size divided by 2. Plus. Okay, so the location is correct. Oh, and actually, the um, the radius size is also correct because we only have two columns and two rows. But if we were to change it to let's say three, now the size of the radius is too too large. So right now, because the radius is fixed at a value of 100, instead of that, we're going to give it another parameter here, r. And this r is going to be, it's going to be the row size or the column size, right, divided by 2. Okay, I'm going to go back to cell again. I'm going to make it a little bit easier to see by drawing a circle at the back so you can see 
where the path is. So I'm going to do ellipse, ellipse this dot x0, this dot y0, and then this dot r times 2, this dot r times 2. What's wrong with this one? Cannot read the property of r. Oh, here. There you go. So now you can just change the number of columns and rows to what you want. And now the size of the radius and the size of the columns and the size of the rows are adjusted accordingly. Perfect. So now the last thing that we need to do is that the starting angle has to be different for you to see that wavy cloth-like graphics. To do that, you can see that right now, angle has a set initialized value of zero. So instead of this, let's give it another parameter here called angle. Okay, and I'm going to go back to something smaller. Let's do 4 by 4. So what you can do to make that effect is that I will show you first. So you do i times a constant. Um, I will call that constant uh, location, I guess, um, plus j times LOC. And then let's do this as 50. So it's going to be kind of hard for you to see. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to stop it from moving first. So this calculation right here, right, gives the location, give a different location per each of the cells. But if you can see, the circles that are lined up in the same diagonal line have the same starting point. Basically, if i plus j equals to the same number, for example, in this third diagonal, um, this one is what? i equals to 2 and j equals to 0, so that's 2, right? Same as this, i equals to 1, j equals to 1, i plus j is 2, and this one, j equals to 2, and i equals to 0. So that also equals to 2. It has the same, same value, same starting point. So this is what the equation gives. And then let's just try to move it again. And then now, what if you comment out these two? You see, this is exactly the effect that you are looking for. Um, so how can we make it look a little bit more cloth-like, like what I showed you at the beginning? You can do a few things. First, let's set the color to black, give the size of each circle a little bit smaller, and then also, instead of doing four columns and four rows, let's do, like, let's do 15. It's moving kind of slow. What if we change this constant here of 50 to 100? And then you can go back to cell, and then you can play around with this, fun this variable. That's it for this video. If you like what you see here, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more of this kind of content. See you next time. Bye.